so dear brothers uh, uh, so from the first uh, uh, few classes uh, we have been studying about uh, the antichrist so we are come to know about the real meaning of the uh, triple six that is not a literal number that it is a figurative uh, uh, number and that uh, signifies uh, the name of the beast uh, the great uh, antichrist system so the general concept about the antichrist being any a single person is not as per the scriptures at all so we are clearly seen that uh, the triple six is not uh, the chip that is going to be implanted into everybody's uh, hand or uh, in the head therefore we read in the bible that uh, the antichrist uh, is not a person that was going to come but uh, it, that system was uh, already existing during the days of the apostles therefore apostle john clearly warned us that uh, even uh, during his period there were many antichrists so this itself is a clear proof that antichrist is not a uh, you see a single individual but a system and we also uh, have studied uh, clearly about the uh, triple six seal that is put on the head and uh, on the hand it signifies uh, the acknowledgement of the evil doctrines or the false doctrines of the system and only those who are uh, uh, accepting those doctrines uh, and uh, acknowledging those doctrines only those who will be allowed to be transacting spiritually that means uh, they they uh, those people only will be given the opportunity to speak about the word of god and we also seen that uh, the triple six uh, that is sealed on the ha hand is not the literal uh, triple six but the uh, way we support the civil system the way we acknowledge the civil system it uh, automatically that uh, we are taking the seal on our hand so we also saw the calculation of triple six uh, how it is uh, clearly represented in the name of uh, vicarious philidi so dear brethren so as soon as uh, we have studied antichrist the general question that comes to our mind is that after antichrist the second coming of lord jesus should happen so this is uh, the natural trend that is uh, as per the scriptures so after the antichrist the bible clearly tells uh, that the second coming of our lord should happen so let us read about the second coming of our lord today how jesus is going to come when jesus is going to come and for what reason jesus is going to come at the second advent so let us read second thessalonians second chapter verses 1 to 3 read with a gopal brother now we beseech you Brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon second in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, Apostle Paul here clearly tells uh, that the brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we be gathering together unto him, that uh, let not anybody be soon shaken or be troubled, because if anybody comes uh, and tells that the Christ has already come, though it be by a letter, by a word or anything, don't easily believe it. It tells, let no man deceive you by any means. Why? And it tells the reason that before the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, first, they should be a falling away first. What do you mean by falling away first? This is what we read about the Antichrist system. That the church should first fall away from the truth. Then the man of sin, who is secretly already working in the church, you should be revealed. So once the Antichrist comes, then only the Lord Jesus Christ's second coming will happen. That's what this scripture clearly tells. That means after the Antichrist system is clearly recognized, then only this scripture clearly tells that we should be expecting the Lord's second coming. So generally, if we ask our this question about the Lord's second coming to anybody, Everybody will tell that uh, 
Jesus is coming very soon. When will Jesus come? He'll tell very soon, very soon, very soon. You see, that's what uh, you see. Uh, some churches are named as Maranatha. What do you mean by Maranatha? Maranatha means very soon. So you see, whenever we ask, uh, the people will tell that, oh, Jesus is going to come very soon. Really, we are also been hearing these words uh, very soon, very soon for past two thousand years. Sir. Do you really think for an angel to come from heaven to earth, does it take nearly 2,000 years? He can come within a lightning speed. Why Jesus has not even come till now? So everybody will tell that, uh, no, regarding the date, uh, regarding the tower, uh, no man knows. Uh, you see, nobody knows. Uh, you see, dear brethren, uh, because uh, that time is totally hidden from God. Uh, you see, only God knows it and God has hidden it from every mankind. Nobody, not even Jesus knows it. Why? Why do they tell this one? Because there is a scripture that clearly tells that uh, that day and that hour no man knows. Not even the son of man. Let us read Mark 13, 32. Mark 13, 32. Home brother, can you read? Mark 13, 32. Home brother? Yeah, thank you. Yes. 13, 32. Correct. But of that day... Correct. Yes. But of that day and that hour, no, no man, no, not the angel which are in heaven, and there's the son, but the father. See, no man knows. That is the reason everybody will tell that uh, uh, second coming of Jesus. We don't know. We don't know when he's going to come, but he is going to come very soon, very soon, very soon. Dear brethren, of course, Jesus told these words. But when did Jesus tell these words? He told these words before his death, before proving to God that he will remain faithful till death. But once he had proven faithful to God, till death, God revealed everything to him. All the hidden matters, even the secret things in God's divine plan, which was actually within the hand of the Lord Almighty, he has revealed all these things to his son now. Let us read a few scriptures. Revelation 5th chapter, verses 1 to 6. Revelation 5th chapter, verses 1 to 6. Uh, Gopal, brother, can you read? Yes, brother. Revelation 5, verse 1 to 6. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne of book, written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book, and to lose the seven seals thereon. Thank you, brother. So, if you see, dear brethren, uh, here uh, it is uh, shown of a vision in heaven where uh, our heavenly father is seated on the throne. That means uh, he is sitting in the authority. And in his right hand, there is a scroll. The scroll is uh, written inside and outside. So, which is the scroll that is written inside and outside and that is sealed with seven seals? If you see, that is the word of God, the Bible. The Bible is written inside as well as outside. What do you mean by inside and outside? Generally, everybody can read the Bible and understand the outside things, the general things which are, you see, written in the Bible. But if somebody has to understand the inner meaning, the in-depth Bible, dear brethren, it is only possible when God opens it. But unfortunately, if you see in that vision, it was sealed with seven seals. So seven in the Bible always mean a complete number. So seven seals means the Bible was completely sealed. 
And as soon as John sees this one, he began to weep. He felt, you see, very sad that no one was worthy to open the you see, seal and open the scroll. But uh, that is the time that uh, Elder comes uh, and tells to John that uh, don't worry, don't cry, don't weep, weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah. You see, Lamb of God, the Jesus Christ, uh, he is worthy. That means he has become worthy. He has proven worthy. How and when? By dying on the cross, by remaining faithful to God, even unto the death of the cross, that is the time that he proved himself faithful to God and he has proved himself worthy to open the scroll now. Now we can break the seven seals, open the scroll, and uh, he has uh, come to know the real and the in-depth uh, meaning and the secret things uh, which were hidden till then. But now all authority is given to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us read that verse, brother. Matthew 28, 18. Ashish, brother, can you read? Matthew 28, 18. Teaching. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and he spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Thank you. So all power, you see, the heaven and earth, all the power is given to Jesus Christ. Now Jesus broke the seal, opened the scroll, and uh, he understood everything, even the intricate and the hidden things, uh, you see, in God's divine plan. Therefore, Jesus clearly said when he was on earth uh, that if he goes, he will send the Holy Spirit which will guide the church into complete truth. John 16, 13. John 16, chapter 13th verse. Uh, can somebody read? Good. Oh, oh, when he, the spirit, spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Very good, brother. Thank you, brother. See, it tells, he will show you things to come. He shall lead you into all truth, not some truth, a few truth. All truth, the entire truth, you see, uh, revealed in uh, God's plan was totally, you see, been uh, understood, uh, you see, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Apostle Paul, you see, he knew that uh, God's, uh, through God's Holy Spirit, uh, all these things will be revealed to the church. Therefore, when speaking about the Lord's second coming, he clearly mentioned the church will know about the Lord's uh, second coming. Let us read that verse uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5.1. Uh, Gopal brother can read. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.1. Sure, brother. 1 Thessalonians 5.1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. See, about the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. So what does it mean? No need to write unto you means what? So no need to tell you at all? It is not required for you to know? No, 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 no. He did not say like that one. He said, there is no need for me to tell and again write about these things. Because you know it very well. Continue, brother. Continue this verse, brother. Go, brother. Continue. For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You see, he clearly tells uh, you yourself know perfectly, clearly. So the church knows correctly and clearly about the second advent of Jesus. Actually, here Apostle Paul is speaking about the Lord's second advent. How do we come to know? Just go to 4th chapter and read from verse 16. See, actually, this verse division, this chapter division was not there in the original Bible. These were made by Robert Stephenson in the 14th century. Until then, the Bible was a continuous book. So, this chapter division is only happened later. So, actually, Apostle Paul is actually speaking of the Lord's second advent from verse 16. And he continues to tell that uh, 
this uh, second coming this uh, regarding the lord's second presence uh, it is not required for the church uh, to keep on telling again and again because they themselves know it very clearly let us read that verse brother first is from 416 brother uh. for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first okay the dead in christ shall rise first so here it is speaking about a last uh, second advent uh, the lord himself shall descend from heaven you see dear brother it speaks about a last second advent now read verse 17 brother verse 18 sorry verse 18 Verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. See, comfort one another with these words about the words of our Lord second advent. Now continue with 5 1, brother. Huh. But what of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. See, what of the times and seasons of which time and which season, which was already and only in the hands of the Lord? Which no man knew, not even the Son of Man, until he died and proved his faithfulness on the cross. But now, this truth is revealed to the entire, you see, the church. Therefore, the church clearly knows about the last, Lord's second advent. So today, by God's grace, we are going to understand from the scriptures the hidden mystery and the secret of the Lord's second advent. But uh, before understanding this one, we need to understand some of the things which we are going to study. It will be in stage by stage. So in the first stage, we are going to see why Jesus is going to come the second time. So why is Jesus second coming? What is the purpose of his second coming? And in next part, we are going to see the general expectations of the Lord's second coming. In the third part, we are going to see how does Jesus come? You see, in what way Jesus is going to come? And in the fourth part, we are going to see how to identify our Lord Jesus Christ at his second advent. And in the fifth part, we are going to see the date of his second coming. So, let us now go to the first part. Why is Jesus second coming? Why is he going to come again? Dear brethren, we have already studied so many things in depth in the basic class. We have studied that he is going to come again to rule on this earth for a period of how many years? 1,000 years. Very good. 1,000 years. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 to 6. No need to, no need to read. So You know it very well. So Jesus is going to Return a second advent and rule on this earth for a period of thousand years. And not only that one, he is going to come again to bruise the head of the serpent and fulfill the first prophecy which God told to Adam and Eve. You see, that uh, the seed of the woman bruised the serpent head. That means completely collapse the plan and the purposes of the devil. And after that one, not only the one, he is going to come you see, to judge the world, to judge the unrighteous world. That's what we read in Jude, 14th verse also, that the Lord will come with, uh, you see, host of the angels, uh, you see, to judge the wicked of this earth. So, to judge for the judgment purpose, he is also going to come at the second advent. And concerning the church, he is going to return to gather the church unto himself. You see, let us read John 14, chapter 2 and 3. John 14, chapter 2 and 3. Anybody can read? John 14, 2 and 3. Correct. And if I go and prepare up a palace, this place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there I may be also. Yes. So Jesus said, if I go, I will come again. Why? That I may take you 
and be with you and that you may be with me in the place uh, you see i will go and prepare a place for you and come and take you again so it is for the gathering of the church that uh, you see that is the purpose of jesus second coming and not only that one we know this very clearly that in revelation chapter 20 verses 1 to 3 it says uh, that jesus at his second advent is going to bind up satan for a period of uh, thousand years and concerning the general world you see dear brethren jesus is going to come at the second advent why for the resurrection of the dead he is going to resurrect all the dead people you see and bring back to life on the same earth that's what jesus says in john 5 28 and 29 he says not ah, marvel not at this don't be surprised all that are in the graves shall come forth you see some to life and some to everlasting judgment dear brethren so there shall be a resurrection of all and not only one and the main and the ultimate purpose of the lord's uh, second advent is the salvation for all the world's salvation read hebrews 928 brother hebrews 928 hebrews 928 can anybody read uh, read gopal brother hebrews 928 so christ was once offered to offer to bear the sin of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. See, unto them who expect him at the second time, you see, he shall appear unto them unto salvation. He is going to come for the world's salvation, dear brethren. So that is the, the purpose of the Lord's second uh, advent. So these are the things which our Lord is going to do at the second advent when he's going to return. So, now let us come to the part two of our subject. That is, the general expectation of a Lord's uh, second coming. So, what is the general, uh, you see, belief about, about a Lord's uh, second advent? What do the people do think? And how do they expect a Lord to return? You see, generally, everybody believes that uh, Jesus is going to return along with uh, thousands thousands of angels. So all the angels will be blowing the trumpet. Wing! Jesus loudly blows the trumpet and he is going to descend from heaven. Like that only, literally, he is going to descend from heaven by blowing the trumpet. First Thessalonians 4:16, brother. Huh? First Thessalonians 4:16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a sound, with the voice of Archangel. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. See? Then what will happen, it seems so. All the dead people will come to life, it seems so. Then continue with the uh, next. What will happen? Then we. Oh, wait, oh okay, okay. Read, read. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. I got it, brother. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, what will happen? The church will be raptured. They shall meet the Lord in the air. So, automatically, what will happen? All the faithful people will be raptured. Everybody will be lifted from the earth. They will go to heaven and be with the Lord. You see, and they are going to rule with Jesus Christ in the spiritual realm. Just imagine, you see, if uh, two persons are there, if one is a Christian, one will be taken off, and will be left off. Imagine if the pilot uh, is a Christian, and what about the condition of the rest of the, you see, crew? If the pilot is taken off suddenly. Huh? So this is the general uh, belief, uh, okay? That how the Lord will come? He will come by blowing a trumpet, it seems. Loudly, everybody can listen with a shout of an archangel. Huh? Correct, now. Okay, now let us read first season is 5-2. Hmm. Okay, brother. Okay. Yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. Oh, yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Uh -huh. How will the Lord come, it seems? Sir? He will come like a thief in the night, it seems. Right? How will the thief come? Will he blow the trumpet and come? 
Eh? Will he come when everybody is awake, alert, everybody is watching clearly? Will the thief come like that one? No. How does the thief come when everybody is sleeping? When nobody knows, silently he will come and go. Only when we are awake, then only we will come to the thief has already come and gone. So, how do we understand the scriptures? One verse says that he is going to come like a thief. Other scriptures say that he is going to come blowing a trumpet. Will a thief come with blowing a trumpet loudly? No. You see, let us read one more uh, scripture uh, in Acts 1.11. Which also said, ye, ye man of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You see, here Apostle uh, you see, tells that uh, uh, how Jesus is going to return. Huh? As Jesus went up to heaven, everybody is seeing. Huh? Similarly, he is going to come at the second end, the same way it seems so. So that everybody can see. Eh? Correct, no? That's what Revelation 1.7 says, no? Read with the Revelation 1.7. Be behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. See? Behold, he cometh with clouds. Every eye shall see him. Dear brethren, how do we understand the scriptures, sir? Eh? It says, every eye shall see him. Eh? Will... Uh, Thief be visible to everybody. Can everybody see the thief? Will he come with a blowing a trumpet? Everybody can see it seems. Let us read one more verse. John 14, 19. What does Jesus say? Huh? Yet a little while, and the word world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I leave, ye shall leave also. What did Jesus say? Yet a little while. The world saith me, no more. No more means what? No more. For ever and ever, the world can never see our Lord Jesus Christ as they see at the first advent. Dear brethren, how do we understand this uh, second coming? Here Jesus says that no man can see him. The world will never see him. But in Revelation 1 7, it says that uh, you see, every eye shall see him. So, how do we understand the scriptures? And therefore, while studying the Lord's second coming, it is very, very important that we study the manner of his second advent. That is very, very important. Then only we'll come to know how Jesus is now and how Jesus is going to return. So while studying the second coming, we need to study first of all how Jesus came how Jesus died and how he was resurrected and how Jesus is now and how he is going to come again. These points are very, very important points, dear brethren. So without understanding this concept, we can't completely understand the Lord's second advent. So first of all, how Jesus came. You see, we all know that Jesus was uh, with the Heavenly Father as the Logos, as the Word of God, as Michael, the archangel, as uh, the bright uh, morning star. You see, he was in the heavenly realm with uh, our heavenly father. You see, through whom all things were created, for whom all things were created. But uh, he left uh, all the heavenly, you see, life, uh, dear brother, heavenly nature. And he came on this earth uh, in the flesh. He was born in the flesh. Uh, through Mother Mary's womb, dear brethren, and he died on the cross. You see, why? As a ransom for everybody. Remember the first class, ransom. Jesus Christ gave his life as ransom for Adam, dear brethren. He gave his flesh as a sacrifice. He poured out his soul unto death. Why? To redeem Adam and Adam's generation. So let us read John 6.51. What, uh, what did uh, Jesus do with his body? John 6.51, brother. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the 
life of the world. Okay, the bread that I will give is my flesh. So Jesus gave his flesh for the life of the whole world. Dear brethren, we all know very clearly that in the olden days, they used to offer sacrifice on the brazen altar. So once if somebody sacrifices on the brazen altar, in no way can that sacrifice be taken back. So similarly, Jesus offered his body as a sacrifice on the altar of God to redeem Adam and his generation. So in no way can we expect that Jesus to have the same body now. That body is clearly offered in sacrifice to the Lord. So let us read a few scriptures. Hebrews 10.10. 10. Uh, home brother, can you read? Hebrews 10.10. 10. Faith By, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Okay. Once for all. The body of Jesus Christ once for all. So he has offered his body once for all as a sacrifice. Read verse 19 and 20 also. Brother. Same chapter. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holies by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath concerted for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. See, that is to say his flesh. Through his flesh, he has opened a new way. So, that flesh is offered as a sacrifice. So in no way can he take that flesh and come back in the same flesh that is offered as a sacrifice, as a burnt offering to God. So dear brethren, okay, so Jesus is no more in that flesh. Uh, he is now resurrected as a mighty spirit being above all the angels. Let us read 1 Peter 3.18, brother. 1 Peter 3.18. Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Okay. Being put to death in the flesh. But how was he raised in the resurrection? He was quickened by the Spirit. He is resurrected in the spiritual body. Jesus was never resurrected in the fleshly body. He is resurrected in the spiritual body. You see, now Jesus is at the right hand of God. You see, with a spiritual body. Hebrews, first chapter 3 and 4, brother. Uh, Hebrews, first chapter, verse 3 and 4. Hebrews, first chapter 3 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. For being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on, on the right hand of the majesty on high. See? He has sat on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now how is he? He is the express image of his person. The brightness of God's glory, dear brother, is the exact xeroscopy of our Lord Jesus, huh? of our Heavenly Father. So, now Lord Jesus is having the same immortal divine nature which our Heavenly Father is having. Devadan, it is in the same spiritual body, the mighty, bright, divine nature body that Jesus appeared to. You see, Saul, Apostle Paul. Hey, you see, before he was Saul. On the way to Damascus, he appeared to, you see, Saul. What happened to Saul? He saw him, you see, brighter than the sun at the noonday. And as soon as he saw him, what happened? You see, then his eyes became blind. 
You see, he became blind. Now read Acts 26, 13, brother. Acts 26, 13, brother. Acts 26, 13. Mm. At midday, O king, I saw in the way of light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. You see, sun, brighter than the sun at noonday. Can you ever imagine to see the sun, huh? even in the evening? Very difficult, dear huh? brethren. But to see the sun at the midday directly with our eyes, what will happen? After seeing a fraction of a second, our, you see, we can't see anything. It will become, you see, blind. Apostles of Paul saw Jesus in this brightness systems. And what happened to him, dear brother? And his eyes were blinded until Ananias came, you see, and uh, prayed to him. Scales fell from his eyes. Then only his eyesight was restored partially, not completely. Read Acts 9 chapter, brother, verse 7, 9 and 12. Acts 9 chapter, verse 7, 9 and 12. Home brother, can you read? Yes, brother. Acts 9, 7, 9 and 12. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink, and had seen a vision of a man named Ananias as coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. See, dear brethren, if you observe the scriptures clearly, it says they heard the voice, but that they could not see anything. Jesus was visible only to Apostle Paul. He was so bright that he lost his eyesight. He could not eat nor drink for three days, it seems. Dear brethren, you know how did Apostle Paul see? He saw the Lord Jesus Christ, the last. He was the last person to see our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, and how did he see, you know? He saw as if the church is going to see him face to face in the spiritual body. In the same nature, Apostle Paul saw Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 8, brother. 1 Corinthians 15, 8. And last of all, he was seen of me also, also as of one born out of due time. See, last of all, so many people tell now, I saw Jesus in my chamber. Eh? Where? Apostle Paul, what is he Last of all, he's the last. Eh? Nobody can say after that one. He's the last, last of all. He was seen of me as one born out of due time. What do you mean by one born out of due time? Dear brethren, there's a time for everybody to be born on this earth. They have to be in the mother's womb for nine months. After nine months only, they can be born. If somebody is born before the due time, that is the meaning, that is the term that is called as one born out of due time. Or a premature baby. You see, dear brethren, some are born for seven months or eight months. That's a premature baby. Similarly, Apostle Paul was supposed to see as all the church are going to see our Lord Jesus Christ only after the resurrection, in the first resurrection with the spiritual body. But Apostle Paul saw that one even while he was in the flesh. This is the glory which Jesus is having now. He is invisible. You see, he is living in a light when no man can see, when no man can approach unto. That is the mighty and the speciality of that divine nature. Read First Thessalonians 6.16. Gopal brother, can you read First Thessalonians 6.16? Thessalonians or Timothy brother? Oh, sorry. First Timothy 
So you're all awake. Good. First Timothy 616. Hmm. Who only have immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. You see, no man can see, nor can see. No man has seen, nor can see. That is the speciality of the divine nature, dear brethren. Jesus is in the same nature. Therefore, Apostle Paul clearly said that Jesus was resurrected in the spirit. And he also says that though we knew Jesus in the flesh, in future, from henceforth, we know him no more in the flesh. 2 Corinthians 5.16, brother. 2 Corinthians 5.16. Home brother, can you read? 2 Corinthians 5.16. Wherefore, and sport, no, we know men after the flesh, we have to, we have known Christ after the flesh. It now, and sport, no, we, him, no more. Okay. No, we, him, no more. Though we knew Jesus in the flesh, at the second, first advent, but now we don't know him in the flesh because that flesh he offered as a sacrifice for redemption of Adam and his race. So Jesus is no more in the flesh. No more resurrected in the flesh. He's resurrected in the spiritual being. That is the reason Jesus clearly said in John 14, 19 that at a little while the world shall see me no more. Forever and ever, the world can never see him. But he said, you can see me. How and when? Not now, when you're in the flesh. No, he said, you can see me. Because I live, you shall also live. Where I am living, if you also live with me in the spiritual nature, then only you can see me face to face. That's what Apostle John said in First John 3rd chapter. We don't know, brethren, what is going to happen to us, but when our Lord comes, uh, we're going to see him face to face. We're going to see him as he is. Why? Because we're going to live with him as he is in the spiritual nature. Only those who are going to the spiritual nature can see our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, nobody else can see our Lord Jesus Christ because he's in the spiritual body, uh, immortal divine nature body, which no man can see. Then, how did, you see, Apostle Thomas saw our Lord Jesus. He said, no, until I put my, you see, huh, finger in his wounds, I want to believe him. Correct, no? But uh, Jesus appeared to him and showed, Thomas, believe, put your hand and see. And if Jesus is not rejected in the uh, flesh body, how did he appear to Thomas, correct now? Let us read John chapter 20. See, uh, it comes in verses uh, 24 to 29. So we are going to read only a few verses. So when this uh, incident actually happened, uh, the uh, you see the picture is like that, uh, that uh, Thomas was uh, missing. So the Lord had appeared to all the disciples and uh, Thomas was missing there. And all the disciples, when they said to uh, to so Thomas, that we saw our resurrected uh, Lord, he told, I cannot believe your words. I won't believe your words and until I see my Lord and put my finger in his wound, I won't believe at all. Read uh, John chapter 20, verse 24, brother. John 20, 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Thomas, was not with them when Jesus came. Hmm. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. See? I will not believe. I will not believe. So, to strengthen the faith 
of uh, Apostle Thomas, Jesus particularly in this incident came in the same body. So it came in the same type of body, you see, and uh, showed it to Thomas. Uh, and uh, Jesus said, uh, you see, uh, you see, verse 26, read brother, verse 26, continue. Uh. And after eight days, again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and they stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. See? Then How did Jesus come inside? Uh? When the, all the doors were completely shut, uh, suddenly Jesus came inside uh, and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. Why did Jesus say, Peace be unto you? They were all frightened of the Jews and the doors were shut. They thought they will also come and arrest them and put them on the cross in fear of the Jews. So they locked the door and were sitting in fear. Suddenly Jesus entered. How did Jesus enter in the flesh? Can somebody enter in the flesh if the door is locked? No. Jesus was in the spirit of being. He was in the spiritual nature. Therefore, he could enter even the door was locked. Even when the door was locked, he came inside and stood in between them and said, Peace be unto you. And he said, Reach. He said to Thomas, Reach either thy finger and behold my hands. And reach either thy hands and touch into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. You see, dear brother, and just to prove to Thomas and strengthen his faith, our Lord Jesus, in this incident, you see, came in the same type of body they have done. Actually, you see, before uh, this one, Jesus had appeared, uh, you see, uh, unto the disciples. Uh, uh, that is given in verses 19 to verse 20. Okay? So, there also, Jesus uh, came and appeared to the disciples and showed them this one. But uh, in all the incidents, uh, Jesus never came in the same flesh table. He appeared in different types, uh, different forms. Why? Because to strengthen the faith of the apostles in these incidents, uh, he came in the same type of flesh. Let us read, uh, see Luke 24 chapter. Luke 24 chapter. Kindly read, uh, uh, you see, uh, what is the purpose of Jesus, uh, you see, uh, showing it to the disciples in the same flesh uh, to strengthen them. Luke 24 chapter, brother, verse uh, uh, 46 to 48, brother. Uh. He said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. You see, what did Jesus say? He said, you see, you should preach repentance and remission of sins and this should be preached among all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. You see, he says verse 46 that it is written and thus it behold Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. They are supposed to preach the death and resurrection of Christ unto the all nations of this world, beginning from Jerusalem. If the apostles themselves had a doubt of the resurrection of Jesus, how will they go and preach the whole world? That is the reason to strengthen the faith of the apostles. Only these incidents, uh, Jesus Christ came in the same type of flesh, dear brethren, just to show it to the apostles and to strengthen the faith in the resurrection while he was actually resurrected in the spiritual being. Okay? Now, what is the condition of the apostles? Actually, the condition of the apostles was that they should be the witness of his death and resurrection. Let us read Acts 1st chapter 21-22. Home brother, can you read Acts 1st chapter 21 and 22? Um, wherefore of these men which have complained with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Beginning from the baptism of John 
on to that same day that he was second off from us must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection hmm. witness of his resurrection apostles qualification that they should be witness of his resurrection if they themselves could not believe that jesus was resurrected how could they preach to the ends of the world for this reason jesus appeared to thomas in the same flesh how how was this possible jesus was in the spiritual body he was resurrected in the spiritual body and being in the spiritual body in the angelic nature you see they had a special gift that they could come and appear in the flesh like we have seen no in the, the class of the first world there are lot of examples in the bible that the angels came and appeared in the flesh you see can you remember some of the examples where angels came and appeared in the flesh brother home brother gopal brother ashish brother can we tell can you tell me some incidents where angels came in the flesh yeah brother abraham visited abraham yes the three angels three. came and visited abraham and later went to, to sodom and gomorra good gopal brother can you remember any incident no appeared to appeared to Uh, fight with jacob yes fight with angel yes jacob fought with the angel entire night you see and until he blessed uh, jacob did not leave him very good correct home brother do you remember any incident um during right before uh, baptist 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 john like his father with and then with the mary as well oh very good very good uh, he appeared to the father of john the baptist correct uh, very good brother uh, you did not copy from the screen good i appreciate it then he appeared to uh, mary he appeared he angels are appeared to daniel when he was praying uh, even to the uh, you see the parents of uh, samson and in the first world they came and manifested in the flesh and sinned with the uh, to the people of the first world uh, by committing fornication so these are the examples that the angels can manifest different forms of body and appear in the flesh similarly when jesus was resurrected he was in the earth atmosphere for 40 days and in these 40 days he appeared in different forms 11 times in these 40 days so i'll give you a homework next week when you're going to come you need to get me on the 11 incidents where jesus appeared okay and you need to study and tell me in what type of uh, forms that jesus appeared i am going to tell you a few incidents now okay so let us read one incident where jesus appeared to mary read uh, john chapter 20 brother gopal brother can you read chapter 20 john 20 uh, verses uh, 13 Continue from verse thirteen to eighteen, brother. Gopal, brother, can you read? Yeah, sure, brother. Thirteen hmm. to eighteen, brother. Hmm. And they and they say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? She hath unto them because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned her herself back. and saw jesus standing and knew not that it was jesus ah, ah, ah. she turned and saw whom she whom? turned herself back and she saw jesus standing then uh, did she recognize jesus no why why means here jesus did not appear in the form of jesus at all you see next what happened you see Uh, what did jesus uh, say to her uh. jesus said unto her woman why why weepest thou uh, whom seeketh thou see what did jesus question as if he doesn't know anything uh, what woman what happened whom you are seeing what happened why are crying uh, then what did uh, mary reply see uh. she supposing him to be the gardener what 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 supposing him to be a gardener gardener are oh ho jesus here he did not appear like jesus with the wounds on his hand how did he come 
he came like a gardener putting one towel having a sickle in his hand ha huh? how is he come what 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 happened who are you lady what happened why are you crying what happened then she suppose that he is a gardener she is telling ayo sir please give me the my master's body somebody has taken it if you know please tell me ha huh? ha huh? correct no and what did jesus replied was 16 brother ha huh? jesus said unto her mary she turned herself and said unto him uh, raboni which is to say master See? suddenly jesus called her by name what did jesus call her as mary mary then immediately mary recognized that uh, it was the lord immediately she shouted raboni which is to say the master and she tightly held on to the jesus christ that's what jesus christ says in 17 Jesus said unto her, "Touch not, don't cling unto me." Correct, na? Huh? How did uh, Mary recognize Jesus by seeing her, by looking her? Huh? How did Mary recognize Jesus in this incident? Did she recognize Jesus by looking into Jesus, by seeing eye to eye? No. Ah, uh-huh. then how did she recognize? You see, she recognized. Ah, uh, tell me, brother, how? after calling her by name yes she jesus was having a style ha huh? today amitabh bachchan has a style rajinikanth has a style you see big big film stars has a style our lord jesus is a super star he has also got a style he is to call mary in a particular tone in a particular style mary the same tone as jesus called mary immediately she jumped in joy and she identified that oh this is our master you see she did not bother about the looks and all immediately she went and tightly hold on to jesus dear brethren this is a clear proof that jesus was never resurrected in the same body he was resurrected in the spiritual body he could assume different bodies as the angels did in the first world so similarly Here Jesus appeared as a gardener. Got it? Ah, now let us read one more incident. That's the reason I told you Jesus was resurrected in the spiritual body. He died in the flesh. He was raised in the spirit. Let us read one more incident in Luke twenty-four chapter. Brother, see Luke twenty-four chapter. Two of his disciples will be on the way to Emmaus. Okay. Then what happens? Suddenly Jesus joins them. Now see what happens. Look twenty four fifteen, brother. Ah, huh? look twenty four fifteen, brother. Ah, huh? and it came to pass that while they uh, they come in and together and re- reasoned, reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Hmm. Hmm. Continue. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. What are they? Did they recognize Jesus? No. Why? Here Jesus has changed his look, not only the look, even the tone also. You see, as he was going, he was asking, "What happened? What is this communication you are speaking? You please read all these verses when you are in the free norm." Verse seventeen. Then they began to tell, "Yo, you don't know, sir. What happened? Yo, Jesus of Nazareth. We trusted him that he is going to redeem Israel. But see what happened? He died on the cross. He is gone now. That's what he says in verse twenty-one. One twenty-one." Then Jesus begins to take them a beautiful class. See verse twenty-five. Hmm. Twenty-five. Then he said unto them, "O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken." Hmm. Continue. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Hmm. Continue. and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning concerning himself concerning himself <laughs> he began to scold them you fools huh huh you you slow in art you don't even know so much of teachings huh you don't understand the scriptures from moses till the end he has taken a beautiful class on the way to emmaus it seems huh Telling about himself, then suddenly what happened? Huh? The place came in mouth. Huh? Then Jesus pretended as if he's going to a very far country. He told, "No, no, no, okay, bye, bye, Tata. 
Huh? What did disciples say? No, no, sir. You are very dangerous to travel in the night. Please come and join with us. See, what, is, what happened? Huh? Continue with the verse 28. Huh? And, the Jew, uh, and the Jew night unto the village, village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. He, he, he pretended as if he were gone further. Huh? Where would have gone? He would have disappeared immediately. Huh? Continue with the next. But but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening. See, and he constrained, they constrained, they forced him, Abide with me. There is a song now, Abide with me, the day is far spent, the night is at hand. It is based on this song only, this, this verse only. And then, so what happened? Okay, uh, as they invited Jesus, they all went to the inn and sat for a dinner. Now, what happened? Verse 30. Uh, read brother, verse 30 and 31. Mm. And it came to pass, uh, as he sat at meat with them, he, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Mm. You see, Jesus took the bread, prayed and broke it and gave it to them. As soon as Jesus did this one, Immediately, the disciples recognized, oh, this is our Lord Jesus. We could not identify. No. And what happened immediately? Jesus vanished, it seems. Now, you tell me, in this incident, how did the disciples recognize Jesus? Did he come as Jesus? Did he speak as Jesus? No. How did he come? Huh? He came in the form of an old man. Now, senior citizen, that's the reason. When he was scolding, they all kept quiet. That is the reason when he sat for the meal, he was the one who prayed and break the bread. Because in Israel custom, you see, it was a culture that a, a very aged person, a family senior person should always pray and break the bread. And you see, Jesus had a style, no? He usually prayed in his particular way. Everybody has got a style, no? And uh, there's a style for breaking the bread. Uh, and everybody has got style. Why not Jesus Christ? Uh? He broke the bread in the same way. Immediately the disciples recognized, oh, this is our Lord. Then uh, what happened? Uh? Jesus vanished. How did Jesus vanish? Uh, if he was in the flesh, can somebody vanish? No, he was in the spiritual body. That is the reason Jesus could uh, immediately disappear. This clearly proves, dear brother, that Jesus is no more in the flesh. He is in the spiritual body, in the same spiritual body, 11 incidents. You go through all the incidents. It is the same condition, dear brother. He has appeared in different, different forms. Okay? Now, let us read one more incident in uh, John 21st chapter, brother. John 21. John 21st chapter, verses 3 to 11. Okay, we are going to read only a few verses. <coughs> we all know that Jesus had died by this time and uh, the disciples were very discouraged that uh, they were left alone. They all went uh, shipping. Jesus knew this one. Uh, instead of uh, waiting for the uh, Holy Spirit to be poured upon them, they went fishing to the worldly business. Then what happened? As they were uh, fishing, uh, they could not catch anything in the entire night. Jesus came and stood on the shore. Read verse 4, brother. Huh? Verse 3 but and 4. When the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. See? They knew not that it was Jesus. Why? Here, Jesus did not appear as Jesus. He came in a different form, it seems. Huh? Then, then continue, brother. Huh? Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you have a, any meat? They answered him, No. And he said on hmm. continue, continue. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Hmm. They cast therefore, and hmm. now they were not able to do it for the multitude of fishes. Hmm. Continue. Therefore, therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter. It is the Lord. Ah, now, when... see, see, see. Now, who told to Peter, it seems? Uh, John. He told to Peter, this is our Lord. Pa. How? 
How did uh, John recognize that this is our Lord Jesus Christ? Huh? Has the same incident happened anywhere else? Tell me. Did the same incident happen anywhere else in the life of uh, apostles? Think. Yes. In yes, the... correct. When? In chap chapter 5. Ah, when initially they were called to the ah, follow the Lord, no? Same thing happened. Now the same thing is repeating. John clearly recognized, oh, this is our Lord. Immediately he told to Peter. What did Peter do? Continue with her. Huh? Uh, now when the Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he quit his father's coat unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself unto the sea. Okay. Immediately, died in the sea. Why? Afraid. Huh? What did Jesus say? He told to wait. No. Peter did not wait. He led the entire disciples to go fishing. Now, as soon as he saw the Lord, he was frightened. <laughs> what will the Lord do? Immediately died in the sea. Then what happened? You see, huh? Uh, verse 10, brother. Verse 10. Uh. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which they have now caught. Uh, one minute. Uh, verse uh, 9, brother. Uh. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fry of coals there, and fish laid on and bread. See, Jesus has prepared a wonderful dinner. Don't worry, come here. <laughs> Even before they bought the fish, Jesus had already caught some fishes and prepared bread also. Then what did Jesus do? Verse 12. Hmm. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples dost ask him, Who are thou, knowing that it was the Lord? <laughs> huh? Everybody knew that this was Lord, but nobody did not dare to ask him. Lord, is it you? Huh? Clearly knew that is, this is Jesus Christ. Huh? Why? How did Jesus appear here? Did he appear as Jesus Christ? Huh? No. It is incident. The past incident, how it repeated, they clearly came to know that this is Jesus. Dear brother. This is not on the looks. You see, actions, incidents. Speech. Uh, then what happened next? Continue with that. Huh? Verse 14. This is now the third time that Jesus shows himself to his disciples after uh, that he was risen from the dead. Uh, underline it. This is the third time. See, every incident he has appeared in a different, different forms. This clearly proves that Jesus is no more in the flesh. He is resurrected in the spiritual being, dear brother. But only to Thomas, to strengthen him, Jesus came in the same type of flesh, not in the same flesh. Underline it. You see? Why? To strengthen his faith, that he may give the witness of resurrection to the end of the world. If he himself is having doubt, how will he go and teach everybody? Dear brother. And moreover, Thomas did not even put his hand into the wound. He just showed, he told Thomas, don't be disbelieving. You see, be believing, uh, dear brethren. Uh, that is the reason Thomas is called as doubting Thomas. If uh, everybody are resurrected in the same body and if they go to the heaven in the same fleshly body and if everybody is going to have the same wound marks in the body, then uh, really heaven is going to be a pathetic condition, dear brethren. Then it means that Stephen would be having full body full of uh, stone marks. Everybody stoned him, no? And Peter, you see, he also will be having, uh, you see, uh, the marks of nails on his hands and uh, leg. And Apostle Paul was beheaded. That means Apostle Paul will be having his stitches here. And Peter Waldo, he was burnt alive. Then uh, Peter Waldo will be black, burn, I mean, ashes color. No, dear brethren. Hmm? We should understand the scriptures. How do we study the Bible? Here a little, there a little. Seek from the scriptures. Study from the word of God to show thyself approved. What does the Bible say? Flesh and blood can never inherit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians 15 50, brother. Read. First Corinthians 15 50. 
Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither uh, God corruption. Yes, flesh and corruption. blood can never inherit the kingdom of God. You can't go to heaven in the, spirit, in the same flesh and blood. So you need to leave it here. Jesus left it here only. Then the natural question that comes to our mind is that then what happened to the body of Jesus? It was not found in the grave, no. It was not found in a tomb. And what happened to the body of Jesus? The Bible says that the body of Jesus never saw corruption. Read Acts 2.27, brother. Acts 2.27. Because the will not leave my soul in hell, neither will the suffer time. Only one to see corruption. Corruption. Jesus' body never saw corruption. He's the perfect man, sinless body. You see, the sinless body, it never saw corruption. It was never decomposed as our bodies are decomposed. And why did our Lord die? Never left the body there. Why was he taken back? Because, dear brethren, if the Jesus body was left in the grave there itself, you know what would have happened? Satan would have used it, you see, and made a big tomb there itself and uh, started the people to worship there. God did not want the people to go and do idol worship. That is the reason the Lord took away the body of Jesus Christ. Where it is hidden, what happened, we don't know from the scriptures. But the Bible says that this body this not, this, uh, did not see corruption. In the thousand years, this body will be definitely shown to the world. And what will be the uh, reward for uh, faithfulness uh, to the entire world. But we have an example of this uh, from the Bible. The body of Moses. Uh, you see? Uh, who buried the body of Moses? Can somebody tell me what happened to the body of Moses? Gopal brother, do you know what happened to the body of Moses? Uh, Father God. Yes. Buried. buried yes. Buried. God sent an angel and buried it. And who is that angel? In Jude 9, it says this is Mikael. Okay. So why did God send Mikael to bury the body of Moses? Because Satan had a plan to build Mecca and Medina during the days of Moses itself. You see, today what they're doing? Uh, they, 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 you see, they're worshipping the dead body, the graves. Uh, you see, God did not uh, want this. They want, did not want to build a tomb. Uh, you see, if uh, body of Moses was left at that time, uh, then today the entire Jewish people would have built a beautiful mask upon it and prayed for it. Uh, even today the Christians are doing that one, you know, in, in Goa. St. Xavier's body is still there and st is still growing in the nails. Uh, and uh, hairs and all. So they believe it's very holy. Similarly, if Jesus' body was left uh, without seeing any corruption, everybody would have done the same thing. God did not want this to happen. Therefore, dear brethren, that body is kept somewhere, and we will come to know in the later days. Uh, it will be revealed to us. But uh, as per the scriptures, it is clear that Jesus was never, you see, resurrected in the same body. He died in the flesh, and he was resurrected in the spiritual body. So, hope these points are very clear. Very clear, brother? Any doubts, any questions in these points? No, brother. No. Okay. So, uh, we will continue the study next week. So, it is going to be five to six classes. So, I request everybody not to miss any class, to attend the class. I know you will be having a lot of doubts and a lot of questions. We will discuss all the questions, all the doubts at the end of this part. End of the sixth or seventh part. The six to seven parts. So I kindly request everybody to kindly uh, come to the classes regularly, and I'll be uh, trying to send this uh, YouTube recording as well as the notes. Please go through it. Any doubts, any questions, we'll uh, definitely discuss. So, Lord.